Glory to God the Father and Son Yeshua Messiah. Luke chapter 11. The Lord's Prayer. One time Yeshua was in a certain place praying. As he finished, one of the Talmudim said to him, Sir, teach us to pray, just as Yochanan taught his Talmudim. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. Give us each day the food we need. Forgive us our sins, for we too forgive everyone who has wronged us. And do not lead us to hard testing. Parable of the Importune Friend He also said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him in the middle of the night and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. Because a friend of mine who has been traveling has just arrived at my house, and I have nothing for him to eat. Now the one inside may answer, Don't bother me. The door is already shut, my children are with me in bed, I can't get up to give you anything. But I tell you, even if he won't get up because the man is his friend, yet because of the man's chutzpah he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Moreover, I myself say to you, keep asking, and it will be given to you. Keep seeking, and you will find. Keep knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who goes on asking receives, and he who goes on seeking finds, and to him who continues knocking, the door will be opened. Parable of the Good Father is there any father here who, if his son asked him for a fish, would instead of a fish give him a snake? Or if he asked for an egg would give him a scorpion? So if you, even though you are bad, know how to give your children gifts that are good, how much more will the father keep giving the Ruach Hakadesh from heaven to those who keep asking him? Christ heals the demoniac. He was expelling a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the man who had been mute spoke, and the people were astounded. The Power of Christ But some of them said, It is by Bar al zibel the ruler of the demons, that he expels the demons. And others, trying to trap him, demanded from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing what they were thinking, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, with one house collapsing on another. So if the adversary too is divided against himself, how can his kingdom survive? I'm asking because you claim it is by Bar al zibel that I drive out the demons. If I drive out demons by Bar al zibel by whom do your people drive them out? So, they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, one, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man who is fully equipped for battle guards his own house, his possessions are secure. But when someone stronger attacks and defeats him, he carries off all the armor and weaponry on which the man was depending, and divides up the spoils. Those who are not with me are against me, and those who do not gather with me are scattering. When an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it travels through dry country seeking rest. On finding none, it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they come and live there, so that in the end the person is worse off than he was before. As Yeshua was saying these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice to call out, How blessed is the mother that gave birth to you and nursed you from her breast. But he said, Far more blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. 
the sign of Jonas. As the people crowded around him, Yeshua went on to say, This generation is a wicked generation. It asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it, except the sign of Yona. For just as Yona became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so will the Son of Man be for this generation. The Queen of the South will appear at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Shlomo, and what is here now is greater than Shlomo. The people of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they turned to God from their sins when Yonah preached, and what is here now is greater than Yonah. Parable of the Lighted Candle No one who has kindled a lamp hides it or places it under a bowl. Rather, he puts it on a stand, so that those coming in may see its light. The lamp of your body is the eye. When you have a good eye, that is, when you are generous, your whole body is full of light. But when you have an evil eye, when you are stingy, your body is full of darkness. So take care that the light in you is not darkness. If, then, your whole body is filled with light, with no part dark, it will be wholly lighted, as when a brightly lit lamp shines on you. Woe to the Pharisees! As Yeshua spoke, a parush asked him to eat dinner with him. So he went in and took his place at the table. And the parush was surprised that he didn't begin by doing interlat yadayim before the meal. However, the Lord said to him, Now then, you prashim, you clean the outside of the cup and plate, but inside, you are full of robbery and wickedness. Fools! Didn't the one who made the outside make the inside too? Rather, give us arms what is inside, and then everything will be clean for you. But woe to you Prashim! You pay your tithes of mint and rue and every garden herb, but you ignore justice and the love of God. You have an obligation to do these things, but without disregarding the others. Woe to you Prashim! Because you love the best seat in the synagogues and being greeted deferentially in the marketplaces. Woe to you! because you are like unmarked graves, which people walk over without knowing it. Woe to the lawyers! One of the experts in Torah answered him, Rabbi, by saying these things you are insulting us also. Yeshua said, Woe to you Torah experts too! You load people down with burdens they can hardly bear, and you won't lift a finger to help them. Woe to you! You build tombs in memory of the prophets, but your fathers murdered them. Thus you testify that you completely approve of what your fathers did. They did the killing, you do the building. Therefore the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and emissaries, they will kill some and persecute others so that on this generation will fall the responsibility for all the prophet's blood that has been shed since the world was established. From the blood of Hevel to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the holy place. Yes, I tell you, the responsibility for it will fall on this generation. Woe to you Torah experts! For you have taken away the key of knowledge, not only did you yourselves not go in, you also have stopped those who were trying to enter. As Yeshua left that place, the Torah teachers and the Prashim began to oppose him bitterly and to provoke him to express his views on all sorts of subjects, laying traps to catch him in something he might say. <laughs>